Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. So in today's class, we will be doing um, the implementation. I think that all of you uh, would understand that implementation is pretty important. And there are a lot of people who always feel that implementation is something that they can uh, do with more information about and more and more information they ask for um, uh, implementation. So we will be, uh, I will be taking you through the implementation um, station along with the, um, we are going to be uh, doing one of the charts. So that chart, we will go through the chart from the, um, just like any station that we are going to be doing. And along with this, we are going to be having the common tips and common problems um, or pitfalls that the people face. So uh, let us make it more interactive. If you have any questions, any queries about that, then please uh, do let me know. So I will be sharing with you my screen. And on that screen, we will have a scenario. And uh, along with the scenario, there is going to be an implementation chart. So the implementation chart that we are going to be discussing is going to be like new OSCE. But I just want to make sure the people who are appearing for the old OSCE as well, that please don't get uh, worried. The only difference between the new OSCE and the old OSCE, the chart is that the design is slightly different. But the way that you are going to be approaching any medication, how to do the medication checks, what are the principles of uh, when you are doing an implementation chart, all of that is going to stay the same across both the legacy as well as the new OSCE. So um, please don't uh, get worried about how the design is. Just try and understand that what are the basic principles of how exactly are you going to be reading the implementation chart and what are the things that are the uh, important step that you should be doing. Okay, so before we start, is there any question anyone has? Okay, so is everyone okay? Shall I just go on and uh, start the, um, uh, shall we just go on the chart? No questions? Yes, okay, that's fine. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I'm just going to be reading this. Uh, the. can gently lost thing. Sorry. Can you see the chart? And my screen? Can you see the screen? Just say a thumbs up so that I know that everyone is able to see the screen. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, yes. Prince. Yes, I can see. Okay, thank you. Nuhu. So if we are, I'm just going to be reading out the scenario. As we had already discussed in the last two sessions, that with each and every of your um, uh, Shama, you want to ask something? Please go ahead. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. It's okay. I can see. Okay, that's fine. So, um, as we had already discussed in the last two sessions, that for each and every station, you will be given an update of the station. So by update, we means that you know that in real life, uh, the patient's journey is going to carry on like uh, from the assessment to the care plan to implementation. In real life, it is not going to be just a difference of 15, 15 minutes as it happens in the exam. So that is the reason that in the exam to make it as um, near to the real life as possible, they will be giving you a scenario update for every station. So we had already seen in our assessment, we were doing the assessment of a patient called Ash Potter, who came in the surgical assessment unit uh, after an infected abdominal wound. Yesterday, we discussed about how we are going to write the care plan for this person. And today we are going to be doing the implementation. Now for the implementation update, you are going to get something um, similar to the, uh, to the chart, which is there on the screen. So a scenario update. So if we read this, the scenario update is saying that Ash Potter was admitted to surgical assessment unit after presenting with an infected wound, um, infected abdominal wound, mild pain, constipation, following an uncomplicated laparoscopy hemicolectomy to remove a small primary colorectal cancer. Please administer and complete the documentation of their 1200 hour medication in a safe and a professional manner. 
So in each of your scenario update, they are going to be giving you instructions that what you are required to do and also will be able to give you that what is the time, that what should you consider the current time to be. So over here, we can see that they have um, uh, clearly indicated that the time that we have to consider is 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, in uh, the basic principles or just to how we approach on the implementation station, we have to make sure that we are talking to the person. So in the station, in the exam, you are going to get um, an, an actor who will be playing like a patient. So whenever we are going to be doing this, um, the implementation station, we have to make sure that it is the patient that we are talking to. So we should always look and talk to, a, to the patient. We have to verbalize whatever we are doing and also giving the logic behind that why we are doing that particular thing or why we are not doing a particular thing. Now, remember the examiners, they can't read your mind. So you will have to come up and verbalize each and everything, even whatever is going in your head, you should verbalize it so that it becomes very clear to the examiner that what is your thinking, whether you are going in the right direction, whether you have made all the necessary checks or not. So read out the chart. So you should read it aloud, read out the chart and explain that what you are checking, what you are giving, what you are not giving and why. So like if I am checking that it is my right medication, right route. So uh, if I keep on checking in my mind, I might have checked it, but how will the examiner know that whether you have checked or not? Yeah, so please make it clear, say it aloud that I am checking my right route, right medication, right dose, all that. So that it is very clear that you have made your five, uh, all the necessary checks. Then you will need to complete all of the required drug administration checks. You will need to uh, document um, all of the uh, medication. If you have not giving anything, then you will have to put correct codes over there. And the correct codes for non, uh, so you are using the correct co codes for non-administration on the chart. And you are going to check and complete the last page of the chart. You will have 15 minutes to complete the station. And believe me, if you are going to be doing it as per your plan, and if you go in a planned manner, then 15 minutes is more than enough time for you to complete this station. Yeah, so um, any questions so far, anyone has? No, ma'am. Okay, that's fine. So let us start the chart. So this is how your chart is going to look like. Yeah. Now, when we are going to be doing uh, or uh, when we start the implementation or any other station for, for that matter, you know that we had already discussed that we are going to be doing the, um, the introductory six. Now, um, Christine, would you be able to tell me that what are the introductory six? I'll be the patient for over here. Can you just demonstrate the introductory six? Shama. Can I start, ma'am? Yes, please. Yes, start. Uh, so first of all, I have to make sure that I am closing the curtain for the patient privacy. Then I will check for the room for the safety. There is no spillage or there is no hazardous order. So I'm safe for me to enter. Now I'm doing my hand hygiene as per the WHO guidelines. Cleaning palm Show to me palm. the hand hygiene. Cleaning. Okay. Cleaning palm to palms. Uh, then the doors of both the hands. Uh, interlacing the fingers. Interlocking the fingers. Rotational motion of the thumb. Then cleaning my fingertips, my wrist. So now my hands are safe for me to enter. Hello, good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So my name is Tristan Elsa. I'm one of the listeners who is going to take care of you today. Could you mm -hmm. please state me your name and date of birth, please? Yeah, my name is Ash Potter and the date of birth is 1st of January, 1950. Yeah, fine. So can I have a your ID band, please? Yes, you can. Yeah, okay. So you are Mr. Ash Potter. Your date of birth is 1 1 1950. And your hospital number is 0 0 0 4 3 12. Here I am I'm with the right patient. So, Ash, can you please tell me? Can I call you Ash? Yes, you can. Okay, thank you, Ash. So, can you, uh, do you have any allergies, Ash? No, I'm not allergic to anything. Yeah, fine. So, I can understand that you are already wearing a right wristband. So, it's clearly evident that you are not allergic to anything. So, Ash, today here I am to give you the medication which is true for the this hour at the 12 hours. 
so uh, there are some medication that i need to give you uh, at this time so is this the convenient time can i proceed with that yes you can okay thank you so much christine so um, i think that you did really well and um, for just for the benefit of all of you so with the introductory six when we say introductory six what we exactly uh, mean is that we are going to do some of the basic steps which we are going to be requiring to do when we are approaching or when we are starting any of the station and in these ones they are going to be the first step is uh, that you have to make this uh, sure that the scene is safe for you to enter you have to do your hand hygiene uh, according to the who guideline making sure um, that your hands are clean before you approach the patient then you are also going to be then introducing yourself so when you approach the patient you have to introduce yourself and you have to also make sure that you tell that in what capacity you have come to the patient like if whether you are a nurse or whether you are a doctor or who you are and how you are uh, um, have come to uh, to address the patient then you are going to be checking that whether it is your correct patient now this is a very important thing that to make sure that you check the patient id and uh, make sure that it is the correct patient that you have now in order for us to do uh, the patient id check we should follow a three way id check and in the three way id check we need to make sure that we ask the patient their name and their date of birth and let the patient verbalize it so the verbalization of the patient uh, you are going to check that verbalization against the um, the notes or the uh, or the details or, that you have on your chart so uh, like christine did so she made sure that she checked uh, with what the patient's name date of birth and the hospital number along with her chart so that is the second way and the third way is that you are also going to be checking the patient's wristband so with the wristband you are also going to make sure that it has the same name date of birth and the hospital id uh, id number so anything that you notice at this stage that anything is not matching then you must acknowledge that that okay the id band is not correct or it is not written correctly and that you are going to change it after you have um, finished your your implementation so you'll have to make sure that you acknowledge it and that you know that what step you are going to take in order to make sure that the id check is correct um, if there is some mistake that has been made yeah after that you are going to be checking the allergic state status of the patient and you will make sure that the band that the patient is wearing is according to the allergy status so we know that if it is patient is allergic to something they will be wearing a red wristband and if they are not allergic to anything then they will be wearing a white wristband so one more thing that you can do is that if the patient is saying that yes i am allergic to a certain medication then you should also check that what exactly happens what kind of an allergic reaction does the patient get if they are taking that medication so once we have checked the allergy status then we should establish the purpose that why we are over there so in the purpose we are going to be telling the patient that i am over here to make sure that i am i am able to um um do, give your medication of this this particular hour so you are going to be uh, making sure that you are giving the medication and you are also checking that the patient's uh, is it is a convenient time for the patient and that the patient is able to um uh, give a consent so the consent is like an implied consent that they are okay for you to go ahead and uh, give that medication any issues anyone has or uh, um uh, any concern any question that anyone has till till now so is everyone clear with the introductory six yes ma'am okay good so we have already shared the chart with all of you so when we are coming for your face to face training make sure that we have practiced the introductory six we have practiced the hand hygiene so that you are well versed with this thing and you are able to start your uh, scenario in the correct manner now coming back to the chart so we have already seen so we are going to be reading the chart from the first page till the very last page so when we do um, the once we have checked with the patient that okay what is the patient's uh, what is the patient's uh, name their um, their uh, date of birth their hospital number 
At the same time, we should check all of the pages. Say, for example, if this is the chart that I have, yeah, so I don't know, if, uh, if I'm having a chart, then I'm going to be checking the pages, all of the pages, I'll open all of the pages, and I'm going to make sure that it is the pages are same for it is uh, for uh, the name and the demography is same on all of the pages. So I can confirm that that the entire chart belongs to that particular person. And it is not that any other page is uh, not attached for some other person. So once I have done that, then I'm going to go to the next section. And in the next section, you can see that it says that all prescribers or administrators must complete the signature record. Now, that is something that we have to make sure that we do the signature record so that um, anyone who is looking at the chart, they are able to recognize that if there is some medication that has been signed by someone, that who was that person who has signed that medication. So in order to keep the perfect transparency, we are going to be signing it over here. So say, for example, over here, I'm going to be taking that there is a, a nurse and we are going to be keeping the, the name of the uh, nurse as um, maybe um, L. Carter. So I can write L. Carter over here. And my... Um, NMC number, we can write that one. And my signature, I can put as LC and the bleep number. If I have any bleep number, then I can put the bleep number as well. So I am going to complete this section. One most important thing which I want all of you to um, understand and, uh, and follow as well is that please make sure that you are completing the chart as you go along. Don't wait that, okay, first let me look this and then I'll come back and then I'll complete it. Because by the time you come back, either you have forgotten something or you might not have time to complete everything. So when we are reading the chart, carry on completing it as you go along. Okay. So my next section, if I see over here, is um, the allergy status. So the allergy status, I can see that patient is not allergic to anything. So I will acknowledge that I can see that the patient is not allergic to anything, which is fine. And there is already a box. If no known allergy, then tick the box. The box is already ticked over here. Now, then we are also going to be looking at this, the next section, which says that medication risk factors. Now in the medication risk factors, it is, um, it is just, you know, that sometime when we are giving the medicine, we will have to be aware of that whether the patient is having um, any kidney problems or liver problems or patient is diabetic or they are pregnant. And according to that, we might have to um, uh, see that whether that medicine that we are giving, whether it is safe or it is not safe. So has all of, um, all of you with me um, and have you understood this one? Yes, ma'am. Any questions on this first page? No. Okay, so that's fine, that's great. So then once we have checked the first page, then we are going to go to our next page. And in the next page, we can see, uh, again, we have already checked that it is the same patients. So the demography is same, which is good. And in the next page, you are going to see that on one side, there is information for prescriber. And then other side, there is a medicine non-administration or self-administration. So these are the codes which are there, which uh, as we discussed that if in case, if you're not giving any medication or if you're not able to administer any medication, then you can use uh, uh, these codes. So the most relevant code you will have to pick up from over here and you will have to uh, use this code in that particular section. So you can see that there are 10 codes which are there. And in the 10 codes, the code number one is if the medicine is unavailable or then code number two says that if the patient is off the ward. So uh, for example, you have gone to give the medicine to the patient, but at that time, patient is not on the ward. They have probably gone to get their x-rays done or an MRI done and they have not come back as yet. So you are not able to administer the medication. And that is why against that medication, you will write a code of number two. So that anyone looking at the chart can understand that at that point, you were not able to administer that medication because patient was off the ward. 
same way there is self administration unable to administer start dose given because sometime it is possible that uh, you already a start dose of that particular medicine was given and then uh, that is the reason that you cannot give a regular medication because that will make it an overdose so you might have to just write the um, your um, uh, the code against the regular medication then if the sometime the prescriptions might be incorrect for example if um, patient is allergic to penicillin and if the doctor has written amoxicillin inside the chart then you will uh, have to write the code of incorrect prescription because this medicine should not have been over there patient is allergic to this medicine sometime it is possible that the patient refuses to take the medicine um it is also possible patient is nil by mouth um and sometime if you are giving any medication for blood pressure um uh, as you know you will need to check the patient's blood pressure or pulse before giving the medication if you find that the patient blood pressure is already on a lower side then it is possible you you decide not to administer that medication and if you have decided not to administer that then you must uh, write the code of 9 which says the low uh, pulse or low blood pressure and then uh, you might find that there are a lot of other things which are there which you will see that you do not have a reason for uh, which is there in these codes so it might be something other than these nine codes which are there so in that case you are going to write as code 10 and if you are going to be writing as code 10 then you will have to write at the very at the end of the chart so i'm just going to take you to the end of the chart the last page of the chart you will see that there is a section where it is going to say that you are going to be any dose which you have omitted or of the medicine which was coded as 10 you will need to write the details over here now we need to understand this that we need to write the details of that particular thing because we might not know that so you know for what was the reason but other people will not know unless you tell them that what was that other reason so in that for that purpose we are going to be um, writing over here that what was the purpose um, that you were not that you had not given that medication okay so all of us are clear with the codes and how we are going to be using them yes ma'am okay that's fine so once we have done the codes then we are going to go to the next section and you can see that in the next section it says that once only medicine pre medications antibiotic prophylaxis or the patient group directions so this is a section in which you are going to be writing uh, the doctor normally will write okay can i ask everyone to please mute okay that's fine thank you yeah so in this section the doctor is going to write the uh, the medicines which are to be given only once or they have to be given on immediate basis or at that particular time so start medication now we know that sometime the patient might require patient is coming in too much of pain and they they need an instant painkiller even before we have got a chance to assess the patient properly and all that so for that um, purpose the doctor will write in the start section of the um, of the medication chart so that patient can be given that medication on immediate basis and um, the pain comes under control it is also possible that sometime say the patient is going for uh, uh, going for the surgery um and uh, they are they require some anxiolytic before they go to the surgery so in that case as well but that anxiolytic is only going to be required once in that case as well you can give or you can uh, write that medication in this section because this is um, just going to be a one off dose sometime it is also possible that say you are going for a tooth extractions or something so in that uh, normally we would be giving a prophylactic antibiotic and uh, it uh, prophylactic antibiotic is probably are only going to take one dose of that one so that can also be written in this section so if we see over here in this chart that the medication some medication is written over here now if you are going to be reading this chart and the medication the way that we are going to be reading is uh, like we are going to be discussing that how we will read this chart but before that 
can um, maybe shama can you tell me that what are the um, the things which you will be checking when you do a medication check um ma'am um, first uh, the root then so it is uh, going to be the five hours yeah, yeah? five hours okay. the right patient right patient uh, right dose right right medication first i think right medication okay. uh, right pa- uh, right patient right medication right dose right time yeah. right time and uh, right route right route and also like there are few more rights that we can check and the a few more rights yeah. are going to be the right documentation as well because yes, there has to be a doctor's signature bleep number and mm-hmm. also like if there is a stop date start date and if there are yeah, any expiry date yeah yes mm-hmm. so all okay. of these are the things that we will need to check before we decide that okay we are uh, this is my right medication once you have checked all of these things and you are convinced that yes it is a right uh, everything is right then you are going to say that okay i have checked all of my rights and this is a valid prescription so you have to say that whether it is a valid or an invalid prescription and then you need to also decide that whether you can uh, or whether you are going to go ahead and give this medicine so you will see that if that medicine is due in your time or not due in your time if it is due in your time and if it is a valid prescription then you are going to give that medicine if it is a valid prescription but it is not due in your time then you are not going to give this medication and you are not going to do anything else if it is a valid prescription and if it has already been given then you are going to be acknowledging that yes it has already been given like over here if we see then you can see that if we are reading this chart for the stat medication we can see that the date is today the drug is oromorph so oromorph is basically oral morphine and morphine as we all know is an opioid analgesic so we can see that it is oromorph you can tell the patient that this is an uh, morphine medicine that you have got for your pain and it was given at 10 mg per 5 uh, so it is it was the dose is 10 mg per 5 ml oral route it was given there were no special instructions and the time that was gi- uh, supposed to be given was 0800 hours the doctor signature and bleep number is uh, also there and the time it was given was at 815 and the signature of the person who gave it is also there so we know that it is this medicine is a valid prescription but it has already been given at 8:15 in the morning have all of you understood that that how we are going to be reading it yes ma'am okay so we have read this one so we are going to say that okay the stat medication oromorph is the only medication which was give, uh, which was given at 8:15 in the morning so your stat doses are those but you know that this is a pain killer so just to make the rapport with the patient you can always ask that has this medicine helped you or how is your pain are you still in any pain so in uh, so this question patient might say that yes my pain is better or my pain is still there so whatever the patient says about the pain please check it with the pain scale so if the patient says that yes my pain is better ask the patient that can you rate your pain from a, on a pain scale where 0 is no pain and um, 10 is the worst pain so whatever the patient if the patient says that yeah my pain is around 1 so that means uh, that you have some evidence to suggest that yes the patient's pain is really better okay is that clear to everyone yes fine so then after this we are going to go to the next section and the next section is the oxygen the prescribed oxygen we have already checked that all of these are correct um, all the demography is right we have come to the next section which is of the prescribed oxygen now when we are going to be prescribing the oxygen normally there are two three things that we have to see first of all we need to make sure that we know that whether uh, this oxygen therapy which has been prescribed whether it is a continuous oxygen therapy or whether it is just as and when required one so in the exam you will see that it it will be highlighted that what do they want so like in this chart if you can see it is a continuous oxygen therapy that has been highlighted after that we will have to give a target oxygen saturation 
So um, the, uh, we would want that this is the target of the oxygen saturation level that we want to maintain for this particular person. So we, uh, the, it has been highlighted that the target oxygen saturation needs to be between 94 to 98%. So we know that it is a continuous oxygen therapy. We also know that what is the target oxygen saturation. Now we need to read the prescription, which is there. So you can see that currently patient is on oxygen. The starting device, it is written as N, which means that it is a nasal cannula. So the starting device is nasal cannula and the flow rate is two liters. It was start date was today and the prescriber signature and uh, the, uh, the name is also written. And in the stop date, they have written as tomorrow. So this is all of the instructions that we have got. So we know that the patient is on continuous oxygen therapy. The, the, the target saturation is 94 to 98%. It is given via nasal cannula at the flow rate of two liters per minute. And the start date is today and the stop date is tomorrow. So I expect my patient to currently be on oxygen. So in order for me to know that what is the current oxygen saturation, I will be asking the examiner. That examiner, would you be able to tell me what is my patient's current oxygen saturation? Now, remember, this is an exam, and that is the reason that we are allowed to ask all these type of information uh, to the examiner. If it was real life scenario, then we would probably be checking the oxygen saturation of the patient. But in the exam, you are allowed to just ask the examiner and the examiner will tell you that, OK, the oxygen saturation is 95%. So that is fine. So we know that my uh, patient has achieved the target oxygen saturation. But since it is a continuous oxygen therapy that patient is on and it is to be stopped tomorrow, then I'm not going to be stopping it. I will let it run. But I need to make some notes on this one that I have checked the oxygen saturation of the patient. So if you see this section, it is written clearly over here that check and record flow rate and device at each medicine round and other times specified. So I'm doing a medicine round, so I will require to write these things over here. So I can write that, okay, it was today. I will write the time as 12, 12 o'clock because I came at 12 o'clock. And F, R, and D is the flow rate, which I know is two liters. And D is the nasal cannula. And I will also write that oxygen sats uh, at the moment are um, 95%. And I will do my signature. So my signature was LC. So I'm also going to do my signature. I will write who am I, a registered nurse. So this is how I'm going to be recording uh, or I'm going to be completing this section. That I have checked that the flow rate is fine. The nasal cannula is in place and my patient's oxygen saturations are correct. And I have documented all of the things. So any question anyone has on oxygen? Okay, please go ahead, Winifred. Okay, there's something I don't understand. Sorry for taking you back. Like concerning the, uh, the other medication with uh, or aeromorph and the rest you talked about, I saw dates, uh, you're talking like today, tomorrow, in reality, is that yeah. it is right today, tomorrow, is that not really written like the way that should be? So when someone Absolutely. sees the, uh, when someone sees the uh, chat later, we know oh, what the date was given, it was this, is that how it's supposed to be? Yeah, so I know that uh, you are correct in, uh, in uh, raising this question, but I am writing today and tomorrow over here because for the exam point of view, because in the exam, uh, it is the same thing because these are just the scenarios. So it is not a real sort of thing that we are doing. Okay. So from the exam point of view, they are always going to consider it today and the tomorrow sort of thing rather than writing the dates. Because then every time if they keep on writing dates, then they will need to keep on printing new charts every day. Yeah. So okay. that is the okay. reason they will just keep it as a standard as today, tomorrow. And so that it can be used any day. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. But in real life, you are definitely going to write the date of that particular day, whichever day that you are going to be using it. 
Okay, so we move on to the next sort of section. Now in the next section, we can see that it is the antimicrobial. We have already checked over here that the patient's name, date of birth and all the demography is fine. So the next section is antimicrobial. So we know antimicrobials are basically the antibiotics. So who is going to read this one? Can anyone volunteer that who wants to read this chart, this first medication, and then we can go um, and see that if there is any corrections to be made. Christine, do you want to show or Ashwarya, do you want to show it how to read this, uh, the chart? Uh, okay, ma'am, I'll try ma'am. Okay, well done Ashwarya, so try it. Uh, so Ash uh, now will be administering uh, the antimicrobials. Mm -hmm. So the first drug will be the flu uh, fluxosla so, sorry. Flucloxacillin. Yeah. Fluxacillin. And uh, today, uh, it will be administered today. The dose is 500 mg and the frequency is uh, QDS. Uh, the route is peroral and it is uh, duration is for seven days. And uh, since it is QDS, uh, it should be it, it is administered at 600 hours in the morning, uh, and uh, it, it it should be administered at, at 1200 hours also. So now I'll be administering this uh, fluxosaline, um, mm -hmm. and I've checked the five hours. Uh, so uh, five hours, and the doctor's prescription. Uh, and the uh, doctor's bleep number is also written. So that mm -hmm. is, means the prescription is valid uh, mm -hmm. and it's full. So now I'll be administering the uh, fluxosal fluxosacillin uh, at okay. 100 hours. Uh, so 500 mg tablet will be taken. Um, okay, that's fine. Thank you so much. So, um, so uh, um, Ashwarya did a great job. So how we are going to be checking this one is going to be that first of all, we are going to read the name of the medicine. So we'll say that your first medicine is flucloxacillin. Now, always I would suggest that when you are saying the name of the medicine, give that what that medicine is for so that it becomes very clear that you know that what that medicine is for. So you can say that flucloxacillin is a penicillin based antibiotic. Yeah, so as soon as you say that, we patient also knows that what that medicine is, examiner knows that what that medicine is, and that you are also aware that what that medicine is. And sometimes it becomes very handy because the moment you are going to say that it is a penicillin-based antibiotic, if the patient is allergic to penicillin, then the penicillin is going to ring a bell in your head and you are not going to be giving that medicine. So it is make it a habit that when you are reading the medicine, you always, as soon as you read the medicine's name, you should tell that what that medicine is and for what purpose it is used. So we are going to say that your medicine is flucloxacillin. It is a penicillin based antibiotic. I can see that it has, it has been written today. The dose is 500 milligram, which is the right dose. Frequency is QDS, which is four times a day. So it is the right frequency. Root is oral, which is the right root. It is written for seven days. I can see that start date is today and the finish days is in seven days time and the doctor's signature and bleep number are also written. So it is the right documentation. So I can see that it is also the right time intervals are written four times a day. So this is a valid prescription and it is due at this time because uh, I'm giving the medication of 1200 hours. So the way that I have read is that I have every time I said that it is the right medication, right dose, right frequency, right route, right documentation and right time. So as you go along, you are going to be saying that it is right, it is right, it is right. So that it becomes very clear that you are checking the five rights of the medicine. And you have said that it is a valid prescription and it is due at the moment. So once you have decided that it is due at the moment and it is a valid prescription, then at that point, you are just going to make a dot over there. That this dot is going to now tell you that this is the medicine which you have to give. But now in order to make sure that you give this medicine, at this time itself, you are going to be preparing this medicine. Now, when we prepare the medicine, you know that we have got our medicine trolley with us. 
Before we touch the trolley, we are going to do the hand hygiene using the seven steps of WHO guideline again. We will open the medication trolley and we are going to take out the medicine a bottle. Uh, we are going to take out the bottle of flucloxacillin and you are going to check on the bottle that it is written as flucloxacillin 500 milligrams and it is within expiry. So once we are sure that it is, the, uh, it is the correct medication and it is within expiry, you will take out one tablet from that and put in a small cup, the dispensing cup. So you are going to put one tablet in the dispensing cup and you will keep the cup as well as the medicine along with the cup so that you know that in that particular cup, it is the flucloxacillin that you have put. So you have made this medicine ready to be given, but you are not going to be giving it right away. You, will, you are going to read the entire chart and prepare all of your medicines and then you will give them one by one. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so then we are going to move on and uh, we see that it is the only medicines which is, uh, which is written under the section of antimicrobial. There is no other medicine which is there. So I am going to now move to the next page. Now in the next page, I come to the regular medication section. Now in the regular medication section, so I'm going to ask someone else to read it. Uh, Prince, do you want to give it a try? To read the, the Ramipril? Uh, okay. okay. So um, the drug to be given is Rami, Ramipril and mm -hmm. uh, the, it's, it's to be given today at, um, and the dose is, the right dose is five milligram uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we are to, is to be given um, daily, which is the right frequency and the right route is to be given per mouth. And mm -hmm. I can see here that the duration is for seven days and the time to be given, um, Okay, yeah. so maybe I can, I can carry on from over here. So when we are reading Ramipril, so what is Ramipril? What does it do? Prince, what is Ramipril? What kind of a medication is it? Uh... Jasmine, what, what does Ramipril do? Sorry, say again. It's antihypertensive. Anti it is an, absolutely. So it is an antihypertensive. So you are going to tell that the next medication is Ramipril, which is an antihypertensive. I can see that it is, was written as. Okay, please. Can you mute yourself? So you can see that it, it. I can see that it was written today. The dose is five milligram, which is the right dose. The frequency is OD, which is once a day. So Prince, uh, OD does not mean daily because there might be other medicines which are given daily as well, but OD means once a day. So it is, um, so make it very clear that you know that it is once a day. Okay. Root is oral, which is the right root. Duration is seven days and the start date and finish date is also written. And the prescriber's name, the bleep number is also written. So it is, um, all the things are written correctly, but if you see the time, the time is written twice. When yeah. the frequency is supposed to be once a day, but the time is written twice. So something is not right about this medication then. Yeah, there is a confusion over here. Yeah. So what are you going to say? Is it a valid or an invalid prescription? Invalid prescription. It is going to be an invalid, invalid prescription. Because you know that there is something which is wrong. Now, if it is an invalid prescription, what should you do? So you so have you found out. Yeah. Yeah. Carry on. So you don't serve um, the medication at all and you document it. How will you document it? Um, by uh, referring to the code. The code Absolutely. That so we are going to refer to the code. So we will have to code this medicine because this is an invalid prescription. Now, if you go back to the code, which code do you think that is going to be, uh, we are going to be using? Number six. 
Number six, because we know that the prescription is incorrect or, or unclear, because we don't know that why it is written twice when it is to be given only once. Now, where are you going to be coding it? So in this one, think that when can this uh, mistake be made in giving this medication? At what time the mistake can be made? At the next 1800. So someone said that at the next time, which is there. So if you do not code it, maybe there is someone who is going to come and dispensing the 1800 hour medication and they don't realize that there is a mistake over here. So that is the time that they will give this medicine because it is written as due at 1800 hours. So in order for me to make sure that I, uh, I stop anyone making mistake on that one, I am going to block the next time when it is due. So what I can do is that I can write a code of six over here and I will write my signature as well. So now I know that anyone who is going to come at six o'clock as well or 1800 hours as well, they will not be able to make this mistake because I have already coded it. Have you understood that? Yeah. Yes. If it was written as 1200 hours over here, then that is fine. I can code it against 1200. But since my time at the moment is not written, does not mean that I'm just going to ignore this medicine that, okay, it is not due in my time. So why should I write the code over here? It is, you will have to write the code because if you have noticed that there is a mistake somewhere, then you are going to not ignore it, but prevent that mistake to be um, making any harm to the patient. Okay. Yeah. Is it clear to everyone? Yeah. Yes. Okay, fine then. So we are going to move on to the next one. So the next medication is docusit sodium. Okay, so Winifred, do you want to read the docusit sodium? Okay. Okay, continue uh, then. Okay. The dry drug is Timolol. No, docusit sodium. I want you to read the docusit sodium. Okay, let me see. Okay, okay, I'll see it here. Yeah. Okay, docusit sodium is the name of the drug. I can't actually remember what group of drug it is now, but uh, it has uh, today the dose. It is, is a laxative. So we can say that it is a laxative. So it helps with constipation. Okay, Docusate, the drug is docusate sodium. It is a laxative. It helps mm -hmm. in constipation. It helps in constipation. Uh, today, the dose today, it's, it's uh, the dose is hundred milligram. Frequency mm -hmm. is TD. That's mm -hmm. uh, three times a day. Yeah. Then the, the root per hour. Yeah. Duration of seven seven days. Mm -hmm. Um, it's already been given today at six uh, at six a.m. Mm -hmm. and signature the person is already there. Mm -hmm. And um, for today, for today, oh, oh my God, what is happening to my screen? Okay, for today, instruction. Oh, I don't understand. Are you able to see it any better now? Okay, yes, I can see it now. For today, it is a six days. Uh -huh. it's, the time is correct. The time is correct. It's written at uh, six in the morning, twelve, and uh -huh. it's uh, eighteen hours, which is six again in the evening. That's for three days, uh, three uh -huh. times a day. It yeah. has to be given in the afternoon. Time given in, uh, by twelve midday, so I can give by twelve midday mm -hmm. uh, for, for today. And the duration of the drug is seven days plus. And the signature of the uh, prescriber is there already. Yeah. So it is becomes a, a... So it is a, so it is a right uh, prescription. So it is a valid prescription. It is a valid prescription, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well done. So the things which I have highlighted, I think that the yeah. way that you should read is that these things you should read first, the one which I have highlighted, and then okay. go to the time. Yeah, so this side we should read first because this is the side which is going to tell us all the hours. 
So you are going mm. to read that, okay, the medicine name is docusate sodium. It is a laxative. So it will help with the constipation. I can see it has been written today. The dose is 100 milligram, which is the right dose. Frequency is TD, which is the three times a day, which is the right frequency. Root is oral, which is the right root. The duration is written for seven days. The start date is today and the finish date is after seven days. There are no instructions, special instructions which are written. And I can see that the prescriber signature and bleep number is also written. So all of the R's are correct and it is a valid prescription. And I can also see that it is the correct times are written. So it, is, it was given in the morning at six o'clock and I can see it is now due at 1200 hours. So I will be dispensing this medicine and you are going to put a dot over there. So after you have put the dot over there, you are going to, from your drug cabinet, you are going to locate the docusate sodium. You are going to check that it is docusate sodium 100 milligram. You are going to see that it is uh, within expiry and you are going to take out one medicine in a new cup. So please make sure new cup for each medicine. You are not going to put all medicine in one cup. Yeah, so one medicine, one cup. So you will take one dispensing cup out and you are going to put the docusate sodium and the bottle of the docusate sodium against that cup. So you know that in that cup, it is docusate sodium. Okay, is that clear? Uh, Dr. Sima. Yeah. Um, when the drug is supposed to be given three times a day mm. and uh, I'm getting a bit confused with the time, the time uh, for what I know, uh, you know, when they say three times a day, you know, a drug is to be given to in within that 24 hours. So if it's three times a day, uh, it's supposed to be eight hour intervals to make that 24 hours. Mm. So now the drug was given at six, but I could see the next time it was supposed to be given was at two, but I can see 12. So in this case, um, does it mean that when they say three times a day, it doesn't matter the time within no okay. what it means is that see when you are giving the medication three times a day then the time interval usually is six to eight hours so you can give it as early as six hours and as late as eight hours so okay. uh, sometime and for qds it is four to six hours so you can yeah, give okay. it, uh, in four hours and the maximum you can give interval that you can keep is six hours now we have okay. to understand this thing that sometime you have to give time for the patient to sleep as well. So if you divide the day totally in uh, like exactly six, six hours or eight, eight hours, sometime your eight hours might come at midnight. And then you don't want to wake up the patient just to take the medicine. And okay. you, want to, uh, you want to give some uninterrupted time to the patient. That is why it is uh, that you will make the timing in such a way that you are uh, giving at least... Uh, eight nine hours for the patient to have some rest or to sleep um, and that is why this interval can be like four to six hours for QDS and uh, it can be for uh, six to eight hours for TDS okay 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 so in the TDS we will be looking if it is uh, um, as long as there is a six hours gap between the three doses it should be fine oh okay thank you Okay, so in the next, uh, so we come to the next section or the next medication. Next medication is Timolol Meliate. Now, this is an eye drop as it is written over there that Timolol Meliate is an eye drop. And um, I think that in the eye drop, if we start reading it, that we are going to say that the next medicine is Timolol Meliate. It is an eye drop. It is, I can see that it was, it is written today. The dose is one drop in each eye. Frequency is BD, which is twice a day. And uh, root, we have, they have not written the root, does not mean that it is, uh, the root is incorrect because we know that it is an eye drop. They have already mentioned that it is an eye drop. Can I ask everyone to please mute yourself? Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so we can see that it is the root is, um, uh, it is an eye drop. So it has made it very clear on the, on the top that uh, that is the root. So that's why they have not written the root, but does not mean that now it has become an invalid prescription. It is a valid prescription because this information has been given to us. The duration is seven days. The start date and finish date is written. So it is a valid prescription. But you can see that it is not due in my time. It was given at six o'clock and the next due is at 1800 hours. 
So it is not due in my time. So I will not be dispensing this medicine. I'm not going to be doing anything. Now, you know that I'm not dispensing this medicine, but I'm not going to be coding this medicine. The reason being is that I'm not dispensing it because it is not due, not because something is wrong in it. The only reason that I'm not dispensing it because it is not due at the moment. And uh, whenever it is going to be due, someone else is going to come and uh, um, give this medicine. Are we clear on that one? Yeah. Okay, so that's great. So we are going to move forward and we'll go to the next page. Now in the next page, we go and we come to the section of the medicine as required medication. Now as required or PRN medications are the medications which are written in the chart, but they are to be given only if required as the name suggests. Now in these set of medicines, you will find that there is no, time will not be written as such. The reason that the time is not written is because you don't know that when you will require it. And that is the reason there is no time which is written. So whenever you are going to be requiring this medicine, you are going to dispense that medicine and write that particular time when you have dispensed the medicine. So let us read this one. So we can see uh, that the medication name is paracetamol. So paracetamol, we know is, it is an analgesic and antipyretic. So we can see that it was written today. The dose is one gram. The frequency is four to six hourly. Root is oral. And start and finish date is uh, not written over here. And the prescriber signature is there. And uh, the bleep number is also there. So in this one as well, the, you will see that the duration, start and finish date are also not given. But do we actually need the start date and finish date? Can anyone no. tell me? No, no, no. no because it's a, as required. That is very necessary. Absolutely. So it is possible that I do not require it the entire day today. I do not require it tomorrow as well or ever. I might not require it at all while in my hospital stay. So it is not necessary to have the start or the finish date or the duration for this one. Yeah. So I can say that it is a valid prescription. But how will I find out that whether it is required or not required? What information do I need? You can have the patient and can also give a pain score that she may help you create the pain score. Pain scale from zero to ten. So she will have to tell us which one she's going to pick. So from what she picks, we'll be able to denote if the patient is having pain or not. Absolutely. Wonderful. So you know that we need to figure out the patient will require this if the patient is having pain because it is an analgesic medicine. So you will check with the patient that, okay, do you, are you in any pain at the moment? If the patient says that, yes, I am in pain, then you are going to ask the pain score. And then you will ask the patient that, okay, um, do you think that you require this medicine? So say if the patient says that my pain is around two. So the pain of two is very mild pain. So you might want to check with the patient that whether you want it or you don't want it or are, do you think that you are comfortable? It is possible that I am okay at the pain of pain score of two and it is not bothering me. So I don't really want this medicine. But there might be some other person whose pain threshold is really low and they might feel that, yes, I still require this medicine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they say that, you yes, we require the medicine, then you are going to be giving this medication. So in this uh, one, let us assume that the patient will require the medicine. So I'm going to be writing over here that, okay, it is at 1200 hours that I'm going to be giving it. And I'm going to be putting a dot at the place where I'm going to give it. And the same way I'm going to take out my paracetamol, I'm going to be checking that the paracetamol is usually paracetamol comes in 500 milligrams. So I will check that paracetamol 500 milligrams I have to give one gram, so I will need to give two tablets. So I will take my dispensing cup, I will take out two tablets and I'm going to keep it ready to be given. Are we okay with this one? Are we clear so far? Yes. Okay, yeah. so then we move on and we see that there is no other as required medication which is written. So that takes us to the last page. And the last page is of infusions. 
So majority of the time in the exam, you are not going to have any infusions which are running, but sometimes there might be that there is an infusion which is running and the duration time and thing. So all you will have to do is that you can, you can just comment on it, that I can see that there's a normal saline which is running and it is um, still three, four hours before it completes um, its uh, course. So we are, I'm just going to uh, let it run but just also want to check that if you are having any issues with your cannula. So that is the only thing that you are going to ask. And you will, uh, you will say if the patient says that, yes, the cannula is fine, I'm not having any pain, then you can say that's fine. Now we have, after this one, we have completed reading the chart. So we have read the entire chart. Excuse me, Dr. Sima. Yes, yes. For this infusion, is it going to be recorded today? Uh, how are we going to know we are just 300 units of 400 days? Is it from the documentation that has already been documented that we are going to act on? Or we are going to be the one to write on the fact? No. So say it is written as uh, normal saline. It says one liter and root is IV. And there is no drug that has been added. It is eight hourly that it is given. And uh, prescriber's um, signature are there pharmacy check is also done um, and given by is um, written checked by is also written and the start time was like say 10 o'clock this was the start time so it is this is the type of the uh, uh, the prescription which is written now you can see over here that this is a normal saline it was it is a one liter of normal saline which is running through iv route and the duration or the rate that it is running is for eight hours. And we can see that it was started at 10 o'clock. Now you currently are at 12, uh, 12 o'clock. So it has been only two hours since it has been running. So you know that there are six more hours which it has to go on. So you are just going to comment on this one that I can see that you are, you are on a uh, saline drip and it is uh, running all right. And it has been only two hours. So there are six more hours for it to run. So I'm not going to um, uh, stop that one. So let, I'll just let it run. Just let me know if you are having any pain in your IV cannula. So we can just check that one and we can leave this section just like that. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Anything else? Okay. Winifred, go ahead. Okay, you said um, uh, we j just we ask the patient if the patient is feeling if the patient is having a feeling pain. Yeah. Are we going to just rely on that? Can't we check site of uh, the six uh, the uh, cannula site to see if there's any sign of a uh, phlebitis or anything? Or that's not really necessary. No, this is not going to be oh, necessary yes. because okay. remember your this task is to give the medicine. This task is okay. not to check the cannula site or uh, find the VIP score and all that sort of thing. So just okay. stick to the task that you are giving. Now that is okay. because it is an exam. In real life, probably you will check the cannula as well because over there you are not under time pressure. But over okay. here you are under time pressure and there is a specific exam. task that you have been given. Okay. Yeah, okay. But the examiner are not going to say that, yes, yes, I'm having so much pain in my cannula. So they're not going to say anything like that. They will just say that, okay, my cannula is fine. It's okay. It's okay. You carry on. Okay. Yeah. So because they also want you to just move on with your task, which is there. Uh, okay. Fine. So now once we have read the entire chart, we are then going to go in the front of our chart. So you know that just like in the exam, once we have written our exam paper, I don't know that how you, all of you do, but I always used to do this, that once I've written the exam paper, I will all, always keep around 10, 15 minutes for the revision of my paper. So, and for the revision, you are always going to come at the front of your paper and you will go from the front that, okay, I have done this, I have done this, I need to do this, I need to do this, and I carry on completing it. So exactly the same way you are going to do that once you have read, you have prepared all of your medication, you come to the front of the chart and before you say, you administer or you start administering your medication, you are going to tell the patient that um, before I start administering my medicine, I would like to do a second ID check. So can you please tell me your name and your date of birth again? 
So the patient will tell name and date of birth. You are going to make sure that it is the correct patient that you have so that you have done your second ID check. Then you will say that, okay, I have written my name and I have completed this section. I know that you are not allergic to anything. Then you are going to move on and you will say that uh, you have already taken Oromov. So I don't need to, uh, there is no stat medication, which I have to give. I have already completed recording my oxygen. So that is fine. I have done that. Then um, I will come to the next medicine. So I can see that I am due to give flucloxacillin because I have put a dot over here. Now, before I give you the medication, can I ask you to please sit in an upright position? And also, can you let me know if you have any swallowing difficulty? Patient says that, no, I don't have any swallowing difficulty. So you are going to say that this is a cup of water. So please, can you just take one sip? And also, this is flucloxacillin. I have already checked that it is the correct medication. And I also know that you are not allergic to penicillin. So can you please take it? Patient will take it. You will check that have you swallowed? Has it gone in? Once the patient has confirmed that patient has swallowed it and it has gone in, you are then going to be signing it over here. So please make sure that you sign it after you have confirmed that the patient has taken that medicine, not before that. Okay, then I will move on and I'm going to go to the next medication. And I'll say that, okay, the next medicine, I can see that I have already um, uh, done this medicine. I have already coded this medicine over here. Then I'm going to further go on uh, and, um, uh, um, and I am going to be uh, going to the next section where I can see docusid sodium. So I can see that I have put a dot over here. So I am going to be giving a docusid sodium. And in the docusid sodium, I have already taken my medicine out. So I will tell the patient that this is docusid sodium. I have already told you it is for constipation. So can you please take this medicine? Patient, take the medicine. You check that. Have you swallowed? Patient says that, yes, I have swallowed. You are going to sign the medication. Then you move on. You say that timolol maleate is not due at that moment. So I'm not going to do anything over here. And you have also said that you are having pain. And so we are going to be giving you the paracetamol. I have already checked that your weight um, is more than uh, 50 kgs. Um, you are not allergic to paracetamol and uh, it has not been given in the last four hours. So I'm okay to give this medication. So I'm going to please take this paracetamol. Patient taken paracetamol, patient has swallowed and you are going to be signing it over there. So once you have done that, then you are going to go on, say that, okay, there is no other medication which I have to give. I have already checked that the infusion is going on all right. So that's fine. I'll let it continue. So this has now completed my uh, implementation and uh, I have given you all of the medication. I've documented it correctly. So all seems to be fine. Now I'll just make sure that I put all of my medicines back in the medicine trolley and I lock the trolley and make sure it is all secure. I'm also going to make sure that I um, uh, clean my hands and um, I will make you comfortable. Now, is there anything else that I can do before I leave? If the patient says that, no, I'm fine, I'm comfortable, then you can say that that's fine. I will anyway leave you with the call bell. I'm not expecting any side effects from these medicine, but if there is any side effects uh, or if you notice that there is any um, thing, if you're not feeling well in any ways, then please do call us. Um, I will also be talking to the doctor with regards to your blood pressure medication and get it corrected before you are due for the next one. So thank you very much. And then you can leave. Now that will complete your station. So any one of you has any questions? Ma'am, when we will go for the station, uh, will they tell us that what time, uh, uh, I mean, uh, which medication or what timing medication we have to give? Like, suppose yeah. I will be in the station uh, at like one o'clock or two o'clock then, uh, and the medication is tedious. So 6, 12, uh, uh, 6 like medication timing would be there means afternoon medication. No, no, definitely, there. definitely they are going to okay. tell you the medication. Okay. And one more thing, ma'am, uh, like if two, three medications are there, as you said that first we have to take and um, 
keep it prepare if three medications are there during my station so i have yeah. to keep that three uh, three medication uh, ready and uh, at the finally we have to give one by one and once we have given one medication then we have to document and then we have to go for the other right absolutely so you should do okay. you should give one medicine sign for that medicine give the second one okay. and sign for that okay because sometime if you say that okay you give all the medic- medication together then you might forget which one to sign which one you have not uh, signed okay okay so always mm-hmm. give one medicine make sure that the patient has swallowed it and after that you sign it yeah okay thank you mm-hmm. yes akolo please ask okay um please i want to clarify something Okay, mm-hmm. we are to give the patients the medications one by one. But what if the patient is insisting on not taking the medications, like wants to take everything at once instead of swallowing, swallowing, swallowing? No, see, these type of things are not going to happen in, in the exam. In real life also, this is not how it will happen. It is not that you are giving 100 medicine that the patient will get fed up or swallowing one after the other. Yeah, so, uh, and definitely in the exam, this is the way that you have to do that you will have to give one medicine, check that the patient has swallowed that medicine, you sign for that medicine, and then you move on. Okay, ma. Yes, Winifred. Okay, I want to kind of a uh, recap to know if I really understood what was thought. Mm-hmm. Okay, like in, uh, in an exam, we are faced with some like to, for, to do medication, I'll approach my patient, um, introduce myself to the patient, ask the patient a name, then check the risk, check and respond to be sure if it's the same. I will read it loud for the uh, examiner to hear. Then I will ask the patient if the patient um, has any known allergies. Yeah. Okay. Then um, I will go straight to these drugs. Mm-hmm. In a, a, go through all this, all the drugs we just saw now. Go through everything yeah. beginning to the end. And yeah. call just like, uh, this is Oromorph. It's this, this dedication of this drug. Then mm-hmm. I will say if it's the right dose or, or not. Then I'll go to the next one again. Mm-hmm. I'll go through everything like that. Then when mm-hmm. I'm done, when yeah. I'm done with everything, then I will now go back from the beginning again and start dispensing the drug, right? Yes. To the patient. Okay, yes. I get it now. So it is always better that you follow the chart. See, sometimes what happens is that we have put three medicines over there and uh, we almost feel as if that let us start with any medicine which is in front of me. So maybe you will, like in this case that we, we, we were uh, discussing, that if you start with uh, picking up the paracetamol first. So if you pick up the paracetamol first, you see that paracetamol is as an uh, when required medication. So you will then have to jump to the PRN section. Mm-hmm. After that, if you are giving flucloxacillin, you will have to jump to the antimicrobial section. So that becomes a very unplanned and a haphazard manner that you are going to go. So rather than doing that, why not follow the chart and the medicine that comes first, you give that medicine first, then keep on moving and you are so that you are following the chart and you are not missing out on anything. Okay. I get you now. Okay, so I hope that the session was useful and you have got a fair idea of how to do the implementation. I will anyway be sharing the recording as well for this um, a pre-recorded thing that I will be sharing. But I think that you will be able to see this on YouTube as well. It's going to be there. So you can see, you can log on onto the Charcos Learning Center, uh, our YouTube channel. And on that, you should be able to see the whole of the session that we have done today. Uh, and any questions that you have, you can uh, please uh, let me know. And we can also discuss uh, any questions to, in the tomorrow session. One thing which I would again want to um, uh, emphasize on is that it is very, very important that you read the medication. Like there was some of the medication in today's chart and you knew uh, that if you do not know the medicine, you will not be able to read it because then you do not know what is the correct dose for that, what is the correct frequency for that. 
if you don't know the correct then how are you going to say that yes whatever is written is correct or not yeah so please make sure that you read the chart you read the medicines i have already given you a list of medicines so um, that will be helpful okay 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 any further question anyone has Fine then, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead, Ashwarya. Uh, Ma'am, even if the uh, Ramipril uh, medicine is not due at my time, uh, should we ask the examiner about uh, what is the blood pressure, uh, current blood pressure? So it is not necessary at that particular moment if it is not due at your time and if it is a valid prescription because anyway you are not going to be giving that medicine to the patient. So uh, blood pressure is important before you give the medicine to the patient because you need to make sure that the patient's blood pressure is not low or um, for you to give the blood pressure medicine and then uh, risk it going to um, going further low. So if your blood pressure is more, less than 110 by 80, then you should um, not give that medication if your systolic is uh, below 110. Okay. Okay, fine then, guys. So thank you very much for joining today. And I'm going to be seeing you all tomorrow. Yeah, so tomorrow we will be doing uh, the skills station. So it is going to be, um, we are going to do uh, the, um, I think it is um, inhalers and um, the peak flow uh, that we will be doing tomorrow. So um, please watch the videos before you come to this, uh, to the session. The videos are available on YouTube and they are also available on your portal as well. So please uh, watch the videos on the portal and uh, read about uh, the, uh, in the reading material and do the quiz so that you are already aware of what exactly is going to be needed in these, uh, these stations. So that we can make it more interactive and it can be, you can just role play like as if that you are actually doing the, it in the exam to gain the maximum out of it. Okay. okay? Okay. okay, fine then. Thank you, everyone. So see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye then. Bye. Care, Thank you. Bye.